there's currently three ways of, in Tobias Reese's words, doing human to which biogeochemistry explicitly gives form. First, there's a scientific human subject that observes, measures, models, quantifies, takes up the watershed as an object. Second, there's a figure of the human as an anthropogenic agent who, on the one hand, consumes resources like water and energy, and therefore needs the watershed system as a natural resource for sustenance. And then on the other hand, has, as human in the aggregate, been a central force for accelerating the very climactic changes that increase and intensify those perturbations which are endangering the subsistence of watershed systems specifically, as well as the earth and atmospheric systems more generally that we rely upon for the near future. The concepts of human implied in both of these cases is one that is separate from the earth, outside of nature. The human appears either as a scientific student of the phenomena of nature or as an agent of nature's anthropocenic destruction and waste. Lastly, as with conservation biology, biodiversity movements and ecological science more broadly, as well as activism, the DOE funded biogeochemists implicitly propose an image of the human as an environmental steward, a custodial role relative to earth and nature, the human as resource manager. No qualms here, of course, with that perspective and practice. I think those values we share. However, the caring custodian that tends to nature is not necessarily a part of it or it a part of them. So the challenge with biogeochemistry remains how to bring the earth and the human together to forge a planetary perspective for figuring a flourishing future for Earth, us, and others together. Earth science holds much promise for this perspectival philosophical work. <laughs>